We ask, Lord, to be with those that are leading this uh, city, <coughs> be with those aldermen, be with all the employees, be with them as they do their jobs and the aldermen do their jobs. I uh, ask a special, special prayer for the leaders of our nation, Lord, that they uh, ask for you for guidance. Just uh, be with these meeting we have tonight, things that said or done, be for the glory of this town and the glory for your kingdom. Yes, thank you for asking my name. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. all right, good evening, everyone. Mayor Gary Moore. Present. City Attorney Darren Rice. Here. Alderman Terry Stahl. Here. Alderman Alan Marsh. Here. Alderman Cheryl Eckleberry. Here. Alderman Eugene McGill. Present. Alderman Bruce McKinnon. Here. Alderman Clifford Reaver. Here. Alderman Dewey Eckleberry. Here. Alderman Cody Atterbury. Here. And we have a quorum so we can continue on. Next would be the approval of the minutes of the last meeting. Uh, you've all had a chance to read those. Uh, are there any corrections to the minutes? If none, is there a motion to approve them as they are? I'll make that motion. I'll second it. We have a motion by Alderman Stoll, a second by Alderman Marsh. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. Anyone wish to abstain? <coughs> minutes are approved. Next would be the bills that were submitted for payment. Uh, any questions on any of the bills? We did have a little longer period. We had a three-week run, so there, you know, they might have been elevated just a little bit. Um, if there are no questions on any of the bills, is there a motion to approve the bills? I make that motion. I second it. I have a motion by Alderman Dewey Eckleberry, seconded by Alderman Atterbury, to approve paying the bills for this meeting. Roll call vote. Reaver? Yes. Stahl? Yes. Atterbury? Yes. Dewey Eckleberry? Yes. Cheryl Eckleberry? Yes. Marsh? Yes. McGill? Yes. McKibben? Yes. And the bills are approved. Next would be the public comment section of the meeting. Uh, we will ask if there's anyone that would like to address the council. Uh, I ask that you raise your hand. We'll call you. You please step up front, state your name, and you will have three minutes to address the council. At this time, is there anyone that would wish to? Yes, sir. Please step up. Okay. <coughs> I live at 809 George Street. I've had a lot of problems over there on George Street. They kicked the people out next door to me, but on their way out, they broke out all my windows on the north side of my house for the second time. And why I'm down here this evening to file a complaint against Chief Cogplazer for, for 15 years, he's led his officers and instructed them not to do anything and the people that were next door damaged my property quite a bit. And when you sell that house next door to me, when they sell that house next door to me, they need to disclose what they did to my property by dumping raw human feces on me for four years before I put cash down on my place. Because it's called a disclosure law. And um, I want, with all due respect to everybody sitting here on this council, Chief Golf Glazer should get a citation for damaging my property for 15 years. And that's the best thing I can tell you, because it wasn't right. Because he should have done his job. And there's other revenues I can go through. It's not civil because it's criminal for what they've done to me over there. And Mayor Moore here, with all due respect to him, I know he I've talked to him several times recently. I have a lot of respect for him and the rest of you, but for some reason, being a Navy veteran, 
This town does not respect me for what it done to me over there at my place. Destroyed my home, my cars, my vehicles. Shot me with BB guns, pointed bow and arrows at me. And the laws, every time the law was called, they laughed about it and left. And that's not right, sir. Amen. So, with all due respect to everybody sitting here, I hope it never happens to you. But this went on for 15 years over there. They destroyed everything I had over there. Somebody needs to address it. And I stand here before you, humble and grateful for everything that's been done to the good for me in this city. Because I've worked for several people that do see my potential. I'm getting old. Shh. <laughs> I'm wore out. But I have a lot of respect for my peers and elders. And I'll leave it be at that. You decide. It. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to address the council? All right, just okay. Just a minute, sir. I'm, I will call you up. I am going to just recite something here uh, with the Open Meetings Act. Anybody is has the ability to speak at a public comment, but the Attorney's General Office gives us the ability to set what can and cannot be talked about at the City Council meetings and to address them. Uh, in, in doing some research, there is a ordinance, 31.14 uh, with the Rules of Public Participation, and it basically states, you know, just like I said, I'm going to ask you to state your name. I'm going to ask you, you, you will have three minutes. Uh, but item number three on this ordinance specifically states, questions or comments shall be limited to city business. Comments supporting or opposing a nominated person's candidacy or election shall not be permitted. So, Mr. Sanders, if you would like to come up. Uh, Before I begin with my own comments, I would just like to say that uh, I don't have political aspirations. Um, I just want to be free from this situation. So I would like to take my three minutes if that's all right. Okay. Okay. All right. So uh, this is day 1,163. Hey, sir, I'm going to stop you right there a minute. That has nothing to do with city business. That is a legal okay. matter with so the state of Alabama. I was the victim of a vehicle invasion by cops. Sir, that is... The when press reported that I hit a cop with my car leaving Walmart, and I did not do that. Constitutional rights only exist if granted in real time. I don't have Second or Sixth Amendment rights. 1,163. I'm correct. I apologize for that. And we will continue to move on with routine business. Um, <coughs> item number one is a street closing request for the First Baptist Church for Vacation Bible School. All right, uh, we have a letter from the First Baptist Church. It says, we will soon be hosting our annual vacation Bible school. We are contacting you to request the closure of Douglas Street between South 1st Street and Southeast 2nd Street during the hours of 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. Monday, July 17th through Friday, July 21st, 2023. I believe this is something that you know the city council has done yearly. Uh, and so I will open it up. Is there any discussion uh, for the request of the church to close it if there are none is there a motion to approve the street closing i'll make that motion i'll second so. i don't know <laughs> dewey was first and who was second who wants to be second eugene all in favor say aye. aye aye opposed say no anyone wish to abstain motion is passed the last item in routine business is a discussion concerning the small trucks. If you will remember uh, last meeting, uh, it was brought uh, up under miscellaneous to see 
uh, the legal status of allowing uh, a small truck uh, to be licensed under our ATV golf cart uh, ordinance. And we ask Attorney Rice to investigate that, so I will turn it over to Attorney Rice. Sure. And, um, you know, just interrupt me if you got any questions about it, but I, I did some checking um, on my own, read through the uh, statute and what we've got in place, and I've also consulted with the uh, Secretary of State uh, uh, Police, uh, just checking to see, you know, uh, I think what it comes down to is we do not have jurisdiction in order to. Uh, enact something that would al allow uh, mini trucks on our road. According to what they've been telling me, when I say they, the Secretary of State Police, they, uh, this comes up occasionally, but uh, one of the big issues is uh, they have to pass an IDOT inspection to show that the equipment on these type of vehicles uh, would be um, appropriate in the state of Illinois or on any uh, American roads. And I think that where they run into a lot of the red flags, a lot of them do not meet the emission standards. So they uh, have not been licensing or approving any of those. If the person who has a mini truck uh, were to survive that level, they could go up to the, they'd have to have a certificate of title and they have to go through the process of getting it from the country of origin and getting that registered. So there's a lot of steps, but if they go through all of those, they could actually drive one on the public road, but I think the reason you don't see so many is because they don't finish the first step, which is get the IDOT inspection and get that, you know, fully uh, developed. So, um, does that make sense, or does anybody have any questions on it? Um, okay, see, then I'll, I'll turn back over. And, and again, you, you know, it's uh, just not going to be permissible. Uh, you know, and it's unfortunate, but as Attorney Rice said, there is, a, you know, possibility of an avenue that they can work through the Secretary of State's office, uh, Department of Motor Vehicles, and actually maybe get that license through them that would, would allow them to drive on any street, you know, just not what we have under, under our ordinance. Right. So, that motion will be back to the end there. Um, next would be the... Uh, uh, the financial report, uh, and I've distributed that. And before we get into the financial report here, and you know, before I talk about it, um, you know, there's there's a little fellow that uh, you know that run around and told everybody to run for your life. This guy's falling. Uh, I had the same know, business issue that I got walked out during the first one. Uh, during, uh, you know, if you take a look at this report, and we try to make it as transparent as we can, you know, this report is a cash in and a cash out. Uh, you know, basically, you know, what's, what's, what's been in and what's been paid for. And if you take a look at the month of June, you know, it show, it's gonna show you a net, in, net income loss of $728,000.78. You know, what, what we may not realize uh, within that number uh, you know, there are some, uh, there's some numbers here. There were $207,000 that was made as a payment under the water filtration, filtration distribution, which is payment on the water tower. Uh, you know, that is a capital asset and should be, um, you know, moved as a capital, you know, as an asset, you know, but it, here it shows it as an expense. Also within that, if you look at the electrical distribution power plant, uh, you'll see it lost 58,000, um, but within that 563,000 June expenses is the power bill uh, that we pay uh, by the 10th or the 15th of the month uh, for $344,000. Uh, if you look under the industrial, there's 39,210. Uh, that is where we purchased the five acres for from Melvin Clark. Uh, you know, so there, there are some things that are setting in here that makes it look bad, but it's just, it's just a cash in and it's just a cash out, outflow. Uh, me, myself and Kayla had some conversations with Kemper CPA today, uh, you know, trying to look at a way, you know, that, we, that the report shows a little bit truer, uh, you know, because those dollar amounts should have been in that report. 
but but they are in there. Does that make sense to everybody? Mm -hmm. I mean, there's, there's just some things there that shouldn't be there. Not to say that they're, you know, that the cash is going to change. Uh, if you look at our cash flow, you know, our cash flow uh, showed a negative $1,190,344 for the month of June. If you look to the note at the right, though, if you remember last last meeting, I stated that we had instructed Kayla to take $800,000 out of the general fund and put that into an interest-bearing CD account, which is just, for us, is a very smart thing to do, and, and the interest rates on the CD are very attractive. Um, Payroll, payroll was at $555,346. Uh, for the month of June, uh, month of June showed three payrolls. Most of our months are two. Uh, in tying some additional information into payroll, I think everybody is aware of the situation that we're having with the water lines. Uh, I had uh, Diane run me a report of overtime uh, an overtime report of when it, we got our first leak, which is around June 23rd, 24th, somewhere around there. And she kind of carried it over to July the, the 9th, I believe, is that correct, Di? And that was about $33,000 in overtime. Uh, you know, when we're repairing leaks on Sundays, you know, we're paying double time. And we've got, you know, not only the water distribution people out there, we've got the gas department digging, we've got cemetery people out there flagging uh, you know and that and then there's the expense that's coming for the material um, but you know payroll for the for that month was elevated by the overtime and also elevated by an extra pay period in the month gaming income was eleven thousand six hundred and thirty five dollars uh, year to date twenty four thousand three fifty six Sales tax income was 134,000 for 257,000 for the year. Um, our, our balance, general fund balance at the end of June was 1,205,707.32, um, and again, uh, if you add that $800,000 back in, I mean, we did have probably a negative cash flow of 300, a little over $300,000, which uh, isn't good. Um, you know, just just a little FYI, um, you know, our power bill for the month of July was about $484,000. You know, so the city, the way that we bill, we are behind. Uh, you know, so the, the power bill that we're going to pay for July, we will not recognize the revenue in probably September just because of the way that we... We, we read our meters and we bill. Uh, you know, I, I think when, when we're sitting here in September, you're going to see that you're going to see a large income and a small, you know, the small bill. Uh, as we get the electrical meters, uh, the new AMI meters, uh, the city will have the ability at that time to bring all of our electric customers current, so that, that when you get uh, when you get a bill in June in, in the first of the month, it will be for what you use. It won't be back behind. Uh, any questions on any of that? Uh, also, in front of the aldermen and, and the media and there, uh, we've got a couple of reports from the Fairfield Police Department uh, for June activity. We've asked Ben and. Chief Callclaser to start providing this report uh, to us. Uh, and again, uh, the Fairfield Police Department dispatchers, they not only answer the calls for the city of Fairfield, they also answer the calls for the county uh, that come in through the 911 system. But Keith has broken these numbers out. Uh, these calls for service are for the city residents only, it does not include any 911 calls. There were 488 logged phone call entries by the dispatchers. There were 78 completed case reports written. Uh, there was four business contacts. There were two felony arrests, nine misdemeanor arrests, and three warrant arrests. There were four local ordinance violation warnings with two citations. There were 12 meter or motor vehicle crash reports. 
and there were 71 traffic stops with 13 citations and currently we have 79 active permits <coughs> you know, for uh, ATVs golf carts. Any questions on the activity report for the Fairfield Police Department? Uh, Chief Miller also <coughs> pre presented one and he does every month that the, you know it's uh, his responses uh, for the for the month of June showed two vehicle fires, 44 EMS assists, MVC okay. motor vehicle crash uh, were three, stalled elevator was one, assisting of another agency one, unauthorized burning one, an automatic alarm one, a CO carbon monoxide call one and a no incident found report of one. Uh, you can see down there, there's some other activities. They had extraction training, um, battery training, uh, fire college, the U of I Service Institute, for kids in motion. Um, so I mean, they, they had 55 calls, but they are staying busy. And I will start providing these calls for these reports monthly. <coughs> Uh, does any alderman have anything to, re to bring up under miscellaneous? Yeah, I've had a few calls from uh, down on uh, Leonard Road by the Trice and Taylor. It's blocking being able to see down the road. The people uh, on Leonard or Penn? Left Leonard Road. Leonard. Okay. 1303. It's been sitting there for, I don't know, six months. And the residents said they never over a year. License are expired on the trailer. Tires are flat. Okay. Um, I told him I'd look into it. Okay. Uh, I, I see Ben, uh, Assistant Chief Lewis, back there taking notes. So I'm, I'm going to say that he will investigate that. Uh, and if an ordinance violation is warranted or discussion, they they will have that discussion with that with that truck. <coughs> Thirteen on three. Anything else under miscellaneous from any alderman? If not, uh, we will not need in an executive session. So at this time, I will ask for a meeting to adjourn. I'll make that motion. Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, say no. Anyone wish to abstain? Meeting is adjourned to the residents of the city of Herbert.